Well, a drug dealer in the family, a wayward child, a lost loved one. The ladies and I, along with Jason Lozano, explore what happens when we engage in supernatural prayer for our family and friends. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, you know, there are times in our lives that we will face impossible mountains and there's nothing more heart-wrenching than seeing a loved one struggle with the grip of darkness on their lives. So how do we mobilize our faith to war for them in prayer and see a breakthrough? Well, today we're going to find out. But first, joining me around the table is April Simons. You know, any of us that are mothers, <laughs> there are points in our life where we not only pray for our friends and family, but our kids. I mean, yeah. and it's an important part because... Um, you know, kids, they can get off track, <laughs> you know. They can? <laughs> yeah. None of yours, of course. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, I have five kids, and I think I prayed over them a lot when they were little, but, man, is there bigger? Woo. I just spend most of my time I think I pray more over the older ones, the grown-up ones, than I did the the little ones. Anna Kendall's still praying over there. Still praying, (laughs) still speaking the word, and I'm speaking the word over my grandchildren that they are disciples of God. Great is their peace and undisturbed composure. And your great-grandchildren. My great-grandchildren. I have one great-grandchild already. Wow, that's amazing. Dorothy Newton's praying over her grandchildren and children. I am. Yes, I am. You know, I need to be more intentional, though. I think intentional makes all the difference, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's so easy just to pray, pray, pray without that intentionality, like truly going to the root of it. Right. And, And but you know that again, you know, we've done shows on this. The the onus is not on us to save our children. That's right. We give our children to God. Right. And then we trust God to do the work. Because if if somehow we think we have a part in it, we're going to We're going to take responsibility if it doesn't go the way we think it should. Everybody has a free will. But we still pray. Yes, we do. We always keep praying. Is that right, Kendra? Amen. You know? (laughs) (laughs) She she almost has a a preteen over here. I I do. She's coming into. I have a little preteen and I have a seven-year-old. And it's funny because the older they get, the more I call my mom. And I'm like, Mom, I just want to thank you. Like, thank you for praying. Thank you for redirecting me. Thank you for my, you know, telling me I have a relationship with the Lord, but and thank you for doing all the school shopping and doing all the, you know. <laughs> but um, it's All important. the things that you kind of took for granted oh, that now you're doing you and you're realize. like, mom was really amazing. Yeah, she yeah. was pretty awesome. You know? <laughs> so. I love it. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. You've prayed a little bit over kids and grandkids. Oh, and my goodness. Such. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know one of my favorite scriptures in the New Testament is like, make your petition known mm-hmm. unto God. And then with praise and thanksgiving, I believe that God will answer. And yes. like you said, we don't take on the onus yeah. of the responsibility of the choices they make, but praying that the Holy Spirit will guide them because as adults, yeah. they're making major decisions for their life and their children, Ooh, right. which yeah. are our grandbabies. It's so true. It's so true. Jason Lozano, welcome back to the hi, table. Hi, 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 hi. Yeah. So good to have you. This you guys is like our, me here. You should bring me back. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is our Latino California pastor coming to Texas to be on yeah. Table Talk. Yes. And I appreciate that so much. <laughs> well, it's exciting. I really I'm do. Grateful He's to be like, here. where is she going? Yes. <laughs> like, what is she saying that for? Okay, right now, many of you are watching and you're dealing with the difficult situation of a prodigal child or a lost loved one. Perhaps they are trapped in addiction, tangled up in the wrong crowd or lost in their own identity. The good news is that you can actively affect and change Uh, and actually see change in their life through supernatural prayer. Mm -hmm. And today you're going to hear how a mother prayed for her son. Um, As Christian parents, especially if you have a child that goes kind of wayward, um, you've got to just give them to the Lord and pray and trust God. You can't make that decision for them. Mm -hmm. God has to speak to their heart and reveal himself. And we've seen him do it thousands Mm -hmm. and thousands of times. So I want to encourage you with that. I I don't want you to have the guilt and condemnation. Okay, it's not your fault. Okay, kids make their own choices. And you made your own choice for a long time. Yes. But um, just give us, I know 
you were on an earlier show and we told your whole testimony. Give the thumbnail sketch. Well, I it. think when you just said that, you make a choice. I remember making that choice at 12, mm -hmm. specifically to walk away from God. And there is a choice, and it is free will. But be, and it would, I would say from the time I was 12 to 19, it was just like a living hell, like just a nightmare of a life. And I would have been a nightmare of a son. I mean, raiding my mom's house, looking for me, selling drugs. But then by the power of God, and I believe the prayers of a mother, uh, mother learning how to bind and loose, and then knowing when to strike when the iron's hot, knowing mm -hmm. when to make the move yeah. Yeah. and say something and when not to. This is just yeah. as important as the prayer, I think. Yeah. The wisdom. The wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. And through, through, I believe, her prayer, her faith, I believe, that it allowed God to move mm -hmm. and bring freedom into my life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she wasn't free. the one really that kind of led you back, but she... She prayed and she was she was there. Mm -hmm. There was actually someone that invited you to a concert. It was her. Oh, it was her. It was my mom. Okay, oh, wow. That's it what I mean. The, the moment, like, okay, so everything. Oh, guys, so much I got to say. This is so good. Go ahead. So there's like, like, there's a moment in the spirit, I believe, when the violent lifestyle, there was a spirit of murder on, my, on me. There was a death sentence on me. Um, because of the gangs. That, mm -hmm. So there was a spirit of murder. My mom didn't know what I was involved in. She wasn't, she, didn't, she knew it was bad, not that bad, but she had a group of prayer warriors that called her all within the same like day or two and said, He's, Jason's life's in danger. And they began to pray, thank God, because I think it spared my life. I think it saved my life. I think the prayer in the name of Jesus, praying the word of God every day and then waiting for the opportunity to come yes. to invite me to the yes. concert because yeah. my heart wouldn't have been open. Right. right. And at that moment, my heart was open and she used wisdom. She never said it was Christian. Yeah. She never said it was Jesus. So it was just a concert. With, and what were you thinking about okay, this what, is what you she, And she was smart. Concert. She's yeah. like, there'll be lights, <laughs> dancing, <laughs> and music. Oh, she never said preaching, awesome. Carmen, <laughs> with demons on stage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, great. So I felt bad for how I was living and the raid and everything. So I went. Okay. And I was on acid at the Carmen concert. And my mom never made a big deal of it. She just sat there like, you know, whatever. But praying in she the spirit. There, yeah. Yeah. And then next thing I know, boom. So what, I sobered um, up. Do you remember, um, like, what were you thinking when you first sat down and the concert started? Like, do you remember any of the songs or what was it that specifically Yeah, yeah I started tripping you. out on everything. Because it was good, very good quality. Yeah. Dancers. Back then, Carmen was yeah. good. <laughs> I still remember the songs in my head. And the dancers and everything. Sing a little bit of them. No, I, I can't remember that one. I have the rhythm, Joni. I have the rhythm. I got the rhythm, but I don't have the song. I got the music in So, so then, but here's what this, I, I was at, on acid. So I'm like, wow, I'm. Like, oh, yeah. wow, this is awesome. <laughs> and then I sober up in a blink of an eye, like what you're not supposed to do. Right. And then he starts bringing, like, and while I'm sobering up, before that, he's bringing demons on the stage. Like, this oh, is wow. enough. And he's then beating them really up. Think you're and I'm thinking, what? <laughs> those are in me. What's happening? And then I'm thinking, what's going on? And then the next moment changed my life it was the beginning of the end. I, uh, whoo, I felt the, um, the love of Father. God. And I knew that's what I was looking for in that lifestyle. Wow. And I don't remember all of it, but they said I took off running down the front, throwing all my stuff, and I mm. gave my life to Christ that 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 um wow. That day. So he gave an altar call, but you ran ahead of the altar call. Yeah, I, I was think. the first one there. <laughs> the first one. And the guy that was there was like was somebody who connected to me. His name was Abraham. I'll never forget him cuz he was like a tough guy, he was like a yeah. boxer from um um Las Vegas or something. And, yeah. And he ministered to me. And um, And what did you say to him? I just broke. Yeah. And what did he say to you? He just led me to the Lord. Wow. And then they took me to the back and those And what was your mom doing? Huh? <laughs> those ladies. <laughs> yeah, with the ladies. Those what was your mom doing? Was, what was your mom doing? She acted like she knew it was going to happen and mm. played it off so cool. Wow. And uh, the whole early process, too, like when, when I had to go in the program, she's just like, you know, you're struggling and all this kind of stuff, telling me, and then basically telling me, like, Carlos Santana music, you know, you got to change your evil ways, baby. <laughs> she tells me, you gotta, I'm like, okay. So 
she was so wise on how she moved. Mm. And, it, and, and I know she prayed, fasted, they gave, they believed, they spoke. And then that, I think a lot of people miss that wisdom piece. Right. You, you don't force that. it on the kids. Right. Don't make them. You, it's, and, and then, like for some parents, it, you have to kick them out because the Holy Spirit will say. Yeah. But for me, she said, the Lord told her, he, he'll, he'll die. And she was right. Now, so, so what happened so, after you got saved? Because I know there was a hit on you. Oh, my goodness. And so how did, how did God turn all that around? Ten years after I got saved, and, you know, you ever had that time in your life where everything's fine but something's not right? And that was where I was. It was the Lord. He was like, he wanted to do something. So I spent some time, like three days, just seeking him. And then this is, it's only happened two times in my life. The first time is when I went to the recovery room. I heard the voice of the Lord. The second one was when he called me to pastor. And he told me I heard the cries of the people. Mm. I didn't want a pastor. I was afraid of it. And, and he said, I'm sending you to the Pharaoh of Whittier to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Mm. Wow. wow. And the burden of God got on me like, the, like I heard it, like heaven's burden, compassion. And I couldn't do anything other than to start the church. Yeah, because you understood in a way that no one could understand. And that's the thing about people watching. You say, I've got all this junk I've gone through. And, you know, hey, God can use your junk. That's right. And bring and set you free and help other people Mm -hmm. because you've been through it. So you had an understanding that really none of us sitting at this table could ever have or understand. You saw evil in a way that we've never seen it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I I never struggled to believe in angels or demons. It Mm -hmm. never scared me because I knew how real they were. Mm -hmm. And um, you know when the devil means something for evil Mm -hmm. and we don't understand things or um, we can get mad at God or all these circumstances of life. But the truth is God has the power when you give it to him to take what the enemy meant for evil and then turn it for the good. And this is what you asked about the, about the, about the killing, the hit that hit on my life. The Lord spoke to me because I said, Lord, you want me to go to Whittier and die for you? Because I will. And he said, no, no. Everyone that was after your life is dead. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I knew God didn't kill them. Their lifestyle was like you live right. by the sword, die by the sword. Mm-hmm. When I went back, it was true. Wow. wow. It was true. And he protected me. One, one time something crazy happened. But it wasn't those people. It was a whole different group of people. Yeah. What was, what was that? We want to uh, hear that story, too. You have so many um, <laughs> stories. Yes. Well, I think, it, my, I think it had to be radical because cause sometimes I share my stories and I'm thinking, wow, this is too much. But it's happened to me. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think yeah. it's because and we're it's sin. it's happening out there. It's happening yeah, where sin people. abounds. Yeah. Yes. Grace. Like, you, like sometimes you can't preach to people necessarily and get them converted. But a miracle yes. will yes. end all arguments. Yes. That's, right. That's right. So just we used to party with, she was really crazy, really crazy background, came to the church when we first started. She was, a, at that time, she was fully demon possessed because she heard that I had a church and she said, there is no way somebody like him will ever change. No way Jason Lozano is the pastor. <laughs> That's right. what she said. Yeah. Yeah. So she came to rob me. She thought it was selling drugs from a church. Oh, wow. So she comes. There's no convincing her. She's all high. She brings this stone-cold killer with her. He's a killer, and everybody knows him, and I know him. But he's not part of my old, but I knew him. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows this guy. She, he's got his gun, and they're coming to church. Sit in the front row. I actually sat him there. <laughs> because she wouldn't take no for an answer. So I said, after church... We'll, we'll take care of you. I couldn't tell her we were not selling drugs. She wouldn't have believed it. Right. Service was starting. So I started preaching. Anointing hits. Mm. He freaks out because the demons in him know this is yeah. not fake. Yeah. What did you do? You're like, yes. and he gets up and leaves, ends uh, up going to getting arrested and running and going to jail for like almost 15 years. Whoa. Yeah. With my voice in his head, you're going to go to hell without Christ. Because I was preaching. I'm like, this, yeah. this is going to kill me. Or yeah. And he, he's a leader in our church now. Oh, he got out. He's married. Oh, he's prosperous. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, he's a radical. And it's her, too. Awesome. She got converted and became a leader. Uh, so, uh, But how she got converted, and at the, she started crying in the service. But she's, like, all messed up. And then at the end of service, I said, okay, let's go. I'll take care of you now. She's like, what's happening? Take her to the back, let her to the Lord. Got her delivered of a demon, filled with the Holy Spirit right there. Wow. Her whole life changed. 
her whole life changed right there. Oh, oh wow. Amazing. Love that story. So that's, No anyway. fear. You were just led by the Holy Ghost. Well, I would say there is fear, but when the power comes on, yeah. you just yes. have boldness. That's right. Because right. sometimes I'll do boldness. things and I think, what did I say that? You know, like, and yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one's ever felt that? You're like, yeah, yes, yeah. And then you're like, what did I say Holy that? Ghost courage. Yes. yes, it gives you boldness. That's so great. And just, um, wow. Seeing your life transformed and the anointing mm -hmm. when you got it to preach. Yeah. Like, it's so much more powerful than any darkness yeah. that someone would bring in. Yeah. It's so incredible. I'm going to just go around the table a little bit. Of course, we're talking about praying for our kids. Is there yeah. any verse that you really stuck well, to? I, I know think... that's one thing your mom said. You find a promise. promise. Yeah, they started with one promise. Yeah. And then they ended up with 45. Mm -hmm. I think awesome. one thing that so impressed me is when you're, you said your mom just was confident. She almost had a quiet confidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think if we as moms, as we as believers or, or parents can just have that quiet confidence in God. God, you said it. Yeah. Yes. I'll do it. I'm, I'm giving my kids to you. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. I can't force them to do anything. Yeah. But I love how she just had that quiet confidence. Just yes, like the, so the prodigal's father, he had that confidence. He looked out his window every day, my son's gonna come home. Mm -hmm. And that's just so impressed me. April, just keep her confidence. Don't look at the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Don't look at what's going on around you. Yeah. Have that confidence in God. If he said it, he will do it. It's so good, Anna. Yeah. Of course, the train of the child or the way you should go. I, I claim that one every day. And then, like I said, and when the, he's old, he will not he will depart, not from, depart it. from it. Yeah. And it doesn't say at what point when he's old, but yeah. we know that That's that good. verse is true. God yeah. keeps his promises. So the promises of God give me tremendous yeah. confidence. Yeah. And Love that. most of the time, I have peace that it's all going to come about. Mm -hmm. Dorothy? Yes. Um, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be mm -hmm. given to you. Um, I used to just, you know, say to the kids, you know, on the way to school, when they wake up in the morning, you know, God first. Mm -hmm. God first mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. No, it's not athletics. No, it's not your friends. That's it's right. not anything but God. He Amen. has to be first from the time you wake up in the morning till the time you lay your head down at it's night. so good, Dorothy. And so um, mm -hmm. that's always been a good mm -hmm. one. And it's a reminder even now. That's so good. I think about that verse in the New Testament that says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved yeah. and thy yes. house. Mm -hmm. And so um, household salvation, you know, when you commit your life to the Lord, you can pray that prayer, God, not just for me, but for my household. I'm yeah. believing for my household yeah. to be saved. Yeah. I'm trusting you with that, Kendra. Yeah, you know, and Isaiah, one of my favorite scriptures and that I'm even having my kids <laughs> recite is that he will go before you and make the crooked path mm -hmm. straight. Yes. 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 And so, you know, don't be overcome with fear. Don't be overcome with worry. And it's it's so hard as a mom because it's our job to steward yeah. their relationship with the Lord. I, yeah. And I just told this, my tween, oh, I can't make <laughs> your choices for you. Yeah. I can tell you my thoughts, my opinions, my prayers, whatever, but you decide yeah. and God sees your choice. So are you going to choose his best for your life? Cindy? You know, I'm thinking about a, a situation, a family situation that was recent. And we were doing the new album and the song God Turned It Around. You remember mm -hmm. I told you? Because in the situation, there was misunderstanding, conflict, and it really was creating a lot of division. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, every time I sing this song, I'm trusting you. Yes. You will turn this situation God around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Yeah. God, turn it around. And then there's a part where it says, his goodness is running after me. Mm -hmm. So I, every time I would sing that, I had that situation before me. And I felt like the Spirit of the Lord said, let me do it and let it be my timing when you say something. Mm -hmm. So I waited till I felt like the Holy Spirit said, now's the time, say something. And when I did, out of any time that I didn't even know it was happening, God was doing the work for there to be a healing yeah. and the conflict resolved. And it was out of my hands yeah. other than just the timing. And when you talked about your mom's timing, her wisdom, yeah. that is so important. That's so good. You know, we talked earlier a little bit about um, forgiveness yes. and unforgiveness. Yeah. And um, do you believe that unforgiveness will close the windows of heaven over your life? Mm. In, well, some, in some respect. The scripture says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord. Great will be their peace. They shall be brought home from distant lands. So we were being brought home from distant lands. Isaiah 55, 11, 
my word shall never return unto me void, but mm -hmm. shall always accomplish what I set it forth to do, and it prosper in the thing I send it. So they're sending the word. My mom, they're speaking the word every day. But I think the blessing blocker it hinders the power. Like It's almost like a kryptonite. Mm, like yeah. the word is all powerful, right? Yeah, Heaven, right, earth, and pass away. Right. The word. We know the, it, it, it's the word of God. It's so powerful. It gives God a platform to move. It moves mountains, the Bible says. Yeah. But it's like unforgiveness is like the kryptonite. Yeah. Mm. To the promises of God. Amen. It is, it, it is the kryptonite. It dis almost disables. Yeah. It, and it just like that's short, why, that's, why they, it. that's why Jesus said, um, love your enemies. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And do good to them that spitefully yeah. use you. I mean, yeah. talk a little bit about that. <laughs> so before I got saved, how great was the opportunity for the offense toward me? Mm -hmm. Right. And because if you if you get offense in, he, that, the the word's not going to work in that heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just not. So she had to be willing to continually, daily forgive me. Not look at what he looks like. Not look mm. at what he's saying. Not look at the police in our home. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we're going to walk by faith. And you know what she said on the floor? She said, "All when they had the cops were there, all my she goes, all my children shall be taught by the Lord. Oh, wow. And great will peace you. with tears in her eyes. Because you can have faith in your heart yeah. and then fear in your emotions. But it doesn't mean you're not believing. Right. Yeah. But then, not only did she have to forgive me, yeah. but then she had to forgive herself yes. and let that go. Yeah. And no condemnation. Because right. um, as long as she's in, it's one thing, okay, I'm going to forgive Jason, I'm going to forgive Tamar, my, my sister, my brother Raymond. I'm going to forgive them. Yeah, that's one thing. But what about forgiving yourself? Mm -hmm. That The devil's a yeah. accuser. Right. And he's he in this mess because of what you did. And he's, but she had to break free from that. So not only stand on the word, for our freedom, but for her own freedom. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah. your first dad left you. Yes. Your stepdad abused you. Yes, every and day. And so your whole image of the Heavenly Father was distorted from the very beginning. Oh, my yeah. daddy, my daddy. <laughs> yeah, oh. I know, I know he's so precious to you now. But talk a little bit about how the Lord spoke to you about your own unforgiveness, because I feel like there are people watching that mm. as we talk about this, you're going to, the Holy Spirit's going to bring to mind some situations and you're like, oh, I dealt with that. I'm good. But, but, but he's going to be like, oh, no, you didn't. So talk about yeah. that, Jason. I think Joni, like, he, he guided me through a process, which we take a lot of people through now in our church. Like, it's probably our most powerful thing that we do. It's like, you kind of take them through a process of, the way the Lord had me do it was like, okay, this is the name of the person who hurt me and this is what they did. And it's not about rehashing, yeah. like, for the purpose of pain, but it's almost like you got to bring it up yeah. to put it on the altar of the Lord yeah. and say, here, Lord. You got to shine the light on it. You got to shine the light on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And it, rather than just bury it, just like, here it is, Lord. Here, here's the abuse. Here, here's the curses they put on us. Here's mm. the. So what did you do? Just kind of go through. Well, I forgave my, my father for abandoning me and what that made me feel, you know. I, I forgave my stepfather for abusing me. And what that made me feel, my stepsister, um, that was that was abuse, and I had to let that go. And that's a big one for people that have been physically abused like that. Um, you know, it's, it, God has the power to help you forgive. And then my stepbrother would bully me. Like people have been bullied. People don't realize how tormenting that is. Oh, kids yes. bullying kids. Yeah, yeah. It really. You, you, I mean, you hear stories about kids killing themselves yeah. right, right. like true. good kids but they're being bullied yeah. mm -hmm. and I had to forgive that and then a lot of X's and O's throughout the years I had to let that go and then I guess the big one was when I had to forgive my mom um, which was a surprise to me like what that Holy Spirit had to reveal that to me because that was nowhere in my consciousness yeah. that was in my the whole, and, I, and I had to let all that go because as a little boy there were times you probably felt unprotected yes. and you probably that was, you know, directed towards her, and you didn't even realize it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think one of the big ones for my own personal forgiveness, this, I think it's going to help somebody. Um, like, I really, I would feel guilty because I, I get emotional. I'm sorry. I just, I feel the power of God. Because I feel like he ministers to people. Yeah, absolutely. And he loves people, and he doesn't want people in bondage. Yeah. Uh, Satan's a horrible, horrible pharaoh. He's a, he wants to oppress people. Yeah. And, you know, I did things in my past that were, you know, terrible. And 
I felt guilty. I was in church and worshiping and praising and praying in the spirit. And um, and just, and the enemy would torment me. And then he put like a depression on me, like, yeah, yeah, but what about this? And what about that? Here you are happy. And these people have been affected forever. And mm. God had to teach me through the word. Mm. It's the word. Because mm -hmm. the word is God. He had to teach me. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Yes. Yeah. And the old is gone and the new has come. And the Lord told me, he goes, and that's why I love Paul the apostle, because he did some crazy things. Yes, he did. Like, that guy was first, <laughs> almost like a serial killer. He was, he was crazy. He was. Yeah. Yeah. And he, um, he, he said, I wrong no man. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Paul, I got history. <laughs> like, we were going to court. You're going to jail. <laughs> like, yeah. you were there when they stoned poor Stephen, you know, right. Stephen. Um, he goes, I wrong no man. And the Lord's like, if you don't let me forgive you of all your sin, wow. then, then I can't forgive you any of them. Right. Mm. And you have to make a choice. So then I let it go. That's where I think people make a mistake. They forgive and they think that they haven't because they feel emotions. Mm -hmm. But we have to walk by faith. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. No matter what I feel, I let it go. So good. Yeah, and you, you can, I mean, you can consciously do that. And you may even feel like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to make the conscious decision to forgive. But then you don't feel any differently. Well, that takes time. But the fact that you are truly giving that to the Lord and you're saying, okay, I forgive. Don't, don't go with your feelings and your emotions. Go with what you are saying to God mm -hmm. because he hears that. Would you just, we're just about out of time. Would you lead um, someone that's watching that doesn't know the Lord, yeah. the sinner's prayer, and we'll pray after you. Yeah. If you're watching now um, and you say, man, I'm far from God, or maybe you've never known the Lord or you straight away like I did, he wants you back. So just pray this prayer from the heart. God's not impressed with fancy words. Fancy words don't impress God. That's right. It's the heart. So pray with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord, Lord Jesus. I believe. I believe. I believe that you're the Son of God. That you're the Son, Son of God. God. That you died on the cross. You died on the cross. For all my sins. For all my sins. I ask you. I ask you. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my, be my Lord. Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. Be my God. Be my God. You prayed that prayer and you meant it, and I believe you did. You're born again, mm. or you got a fresh start with God. Get into a good church. And love them as they love you. I believe the best days are not behind you. They're in front of you. And if you're in the L.A. area, your church. Freedom City Church. Freedom City yeah. Church. <laughs> Revival. <laughs> Revival. I love that. Well, we are out of time, but I want you to remember that the Bible says the prayers of the righteous accomplish much. So. Don't give up praying for those loved ones. Keep praying and believing God to set them free. And if you're watching today, you've been praying for a friend or loved one, and you'd like someone just to stand in agreement with you, um, that's why that toll-free number is there. We would love to agree with you in prayer. If you prayed that prayer uh, and asked Jesus into your heart and life, I'd love to send you a free book. Um, it's entitled, Now What? We have it in English and in Spanish, and we'd love to send that to you. Like Jason said, Find a good church, get a Bible. He kept talking about the Word, the Word, the Word of God is so powerful. And, uh, you know, when you learn scriptures, like um, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, and I'll give you peace that passes all understanding. All those scriptures in there, you need to get those in the arsenal of your spirit, and uh, you'll find that it will give you incredible strength in the days ahead. I do want to thank Jason, the ladies, for joining me at the table. If you were touched, encouraged by today's program, we'd love to hear your comments. You can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. And uh, thank you for watching. I'm really excited about what God has for you in the days ahead. You be encouraged as well. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Jason. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.